Hello, Debbie Kershaw here. I've just come on a little bit early uh, for the Workshop Wednesday tutorial. We've got a lovely tutorial for you today. So I'm just a few minutes early, as I said, just to make sure my technology is working and to give people a chance to join me. And also, hello, if you are watching me on Catch Up, you can always go forward a little bit until the tutorial starts. So if you're watching, please do drop me a little message in the chat, say hello, tell me what you've been up to. It's lovely to see you today on this, well, looking out of my window, gloomy afternoon in the UK. But let me say good morning, good afternoon or good evening to wherever you are in the world. So let's have a look at what we're going to be making today. We are going to be making this really beautiful bracelet from uh, it's a preciosa design it's a scales bracelet and I don't know about you but it looks like it would be really difficult but it's not it's really quite simple hi Susan how are you just checking all my text working before we get started at one hi Leslie how are you how's the weather in Northumberland it's pretty windy here in Yorkshire in the UK so I, when I, you get a free downloadable pattern uh, with this tutorial and when I looked at the finished piece I thought it's one of those great pieces that looks like you know it's really difficult to make but it isn't I love those pieces hi Rakia good afternoon in Switzerland hello Rachel hello from Maine how's the weather in Maine hi Celia from Bolton Oh, Celia's, Celia's on a roll this morning. She's made a bracelet and a pendant. Fantastic. Hello, Teresa. How are you? Hi, Leslie. Leslie says she's been working through activities from Gemma Crow's um, group. Amazing. Gemma Crow's an amazingly talented lady. Um, and I think she did a workshop on here as well, didn't she? Which is fantastic. She's very clever. So I bet you're really enjoying that. She's lovely as well. Um, um, let me, I need my glasses. I'm trying to read without my glasses. What's that about? Okay, here we go. Arnetta, hello in Georgia. How are you? Erica, Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Helen. Hi, Leslie. Oh, it's grey and damp. I've said hello to you already, haven't I? It's grey and damp in Northumberland. Yeah, it's pretty much the same here in Yorkshire. Cloudy, but the wind is no longer stealing pets off the streets. Good grief. We had um, a, a whole couple of storms here in the UK where um, it was blowing people over. Crazy weather, really crazy. It's so lovely that you're joining me today. I hope you're all well. Got a really, really exciting project. Now, it's a bracelet, but I was thinking that it might be really nice as a necklace. You'd obviously need more product. Um, anything that I'm using in the workshop today is available on the website. Hi, Christine. She says it's windy and wet there in Northern Ireland. Yeah, it's windy and pretty rubbish here in Yorkshire as well. Good day to be making, I think. <laughs> Good day to get the beads out or the crochet or whatever you like to graft. Susan says it's sunny in St Ives. I think it's always sunny in Cornwall. I mean, you can prove me wrong. Every time I go to Cornwall, which I love, by the way, um, it's always sunny. So I love Cornwall. <laughs> Essentially, Angeline says that she's really glad she's caught the live stream. Yay, I'm glad you caught it as well. Um, it's lovely to have that interaction with you. So do feel free to ask me any questions um, as we go along and I'll do my very best uh, to answer. Just wait another minute until we are live across all of our, our platforms. We've got people from all over the world today. Uh, that's fantastic. Susan says she's got these beads and she's never used them. Well, this will give you a really good idea of what you can do because you make little components up that make up this bracelet. So it's actually one of those sit in front of the TV or sit down for an evening makes where you don't have to concentrate too hard, which I really like. Um, do you guys live stream on Twitch too? I don't think we do. We go onto YouTube. We go onto obviously the Spot Rotten Beads website, Spot Rotten Beads Facebook. Uh, Juliet's not with us today. She's not available today on the chat. She'd be able to tell you, but I don't think we do. But I'll have a look uh, later for you and put in the chat if we do. Hi, Joy. How are you? Joy's a very talented lady. Is there anything you can't make, Joy? You're very, very clever. 
Rachel says, it's windy in Cumbria, especially by the sea. I was by the sea this weekend and it was incredibly windy. So windy that I got my scarf and wrapped it around my head and then got my hair clip and kind of, all you could see were my eyes. <laughs> I would not be defeated. Hi, Bob from the USA. Good morning. Wet and windy in Dublin. I love Dublin. Got some friends who live in Dublin. Hello in Dublin. Joyce says she can't do computers and cars. Well, that's not very much. So I'm still very impressed. I'm, I'm a bit rubbish at computers, to be honest, too. OK, one o'clock. Should we get started? OK, if you haven't joined me before, I'm Debbie Kershaw and I'm one of the guest designers here at Spoilt Rotten Beads. And um, anything that I'm using today, you will be able to get on the Spot Rotten Beads website. So that's www.spotrottenbeads.co.uk. And if you go on to the home street screen, it's a lovely new website and scroll down, you will see, um, I wrote it down, the just arrived section. And if you scroll across, you'll see these bundles in two colourways that you can purchase. Now, you might already have this in your stash. That's fine. You might only need a couple of things. So you don't have to buy it all. You can buy a couple of bits if you need them or all of it completely up to you good morning from houston it's cold this morning but warming up oh lovely hi elizabeth i'm i'm very well thank you i hope you are too it's lovely to see you shall i show you what we'll be making today let's get the glasses on okay i'll take you down to my beading mat here we are. So this is what we're going to be making today. And it's this Preciosa scales bracelet. So it does look like scales. It's very, very tactile, like it sort of moves. I love jewellery that moves and it's just very, very comfortable to wear. I think it would be a very nice sort of statement, sort of choker type necklace as well. But I would think you'd probably need two or three of the packs of these pip beads to do the necklace if you were thinking of that. Now these are the Preciosa engraved pip beads and these are the main of the project. So I'm gonna go through the kit that you'll see um, in your, on the spot, sorry, I'm reading and trying to talk. <laughs> I'm just laughing at people in the chat. Okay, right, so you will see on the Spot Rotten Bees website that there is a bundle that you can purchase. And I'm just gonna go through the things that I've used in this make, and you might have some of this in your stash. Okay, so let's just move this bracelet out of the way. And I'll show you all the things that I used to make this bracelet. So we've got some size 11 seed beads, and there is a free downloadable pattern as well for this bracelet, and uh, not designed by me, it came from Preciosa. Um, now in the pattern, it does say size 10 seed beads, but I use size 11 and, th and there's no problem. So size 11 um, Miyuki, we have got size eight Miyuki, so these are the 11s, these are the eights, size 15 Miyo Miyuki. Now you don't need very many of these, so you might have some of these in your stash. If not, we've got all of these colors on the website. You're going to need your bead caps. These are the antique gold ones, so you're going to need two of those if you're making one bracelet. Jump rings, crimp beads, and these are the pip beads, and these are the two colourways that are on the website. So the bracelet you just saw is in this blue colourway, and then I'm going to be demoing in this gorgeous sort of gold colourway, and these are the Preciosa engraved pip beads. You're going to need some tiger tail and some uh, monofilament, which you can hardly see because it's invisible, that's the point of it. So... Um, you can use plain pit beads. You can indeed, Christine. You will just have a slightly different look. You just won't have that sort of engraving petal feel, but they'll work just as well. OK, so moving that out of the way, let me tell you the tools that you're going to need. You are just going to need to thread your... Um, monofilament and it does say you can use a needle I didn't use a needle I didn't feel I needed to but a needle if you would like to and you need some pliers to just squash your crimp beads into place and some scissors to cut your monofilament and that's it really so not a lot of of tools needed for this at all now all of this bracelet is actually made up of these little components sort of all bunched together so that's how it's made and they are actually strung on the monofilament it's invisible and has made these sort of little three petal components 
And then when you've made enough of them, you string it all together with some seed beads in between. And that's basically how the um, bracelet is made. Okay, shall we get started? Just check any questions before I get started. Right, fantastic. So it seems like quite a few of you have got these pit beads and maybe you'd like to use these in this sort of design. Maybe this would be an idea for you. So that's brilliant. Okay, so what you, we use to start off with is your monofilament. Now, a little tip with the monofilament. If you struggle to see the end of your monofilament, you can put a little bit of the permanent marker on there and so you can see what you're doing. Okay, so starting off, and you will see all of this in text and in photographs on the down free downloadable pattern. So don't worry. So with that and this uh, video, <laughs> I'm saying video, you know, I'm stuck in, in the 80s. What can I say? OK, you'll be able to do this project. So these are your pit beads, Pressier's pit beads. These are the engraved ones, but you can use the plain ones as well because they're the same shape and they've got the same drill hole. OK, so you start off by making 24 components to go on your bracelet using three of your pit beads. And you would cut your monofilament to do this, but because it's going to be very, very difficult for you to see what I'm doing with the monofilament, even when I put it on a darker black background, it was hard to see. I'm going to do it with some black thread first so that you can see what I'm doing. OK, so all I've done is I've grabbed a piece of black cord here so that you can see what I'm doing. OK, so you cut a piece of your monofilament. I'm using black cord. And if you find it easier to put a needle on the end, you can put a needle on your monofilament. I didn't use a needle, didn't find that I needed it, it was easy enough, but that's completely up to you. And then you just want to string on three of your pip beads. So one, two, and three so you can use that needle if you want to completely up to you oops it's alive so I've not done it with this tiger tail before because obviously this isn't the right stuff but you can see what I'm doing because it's black so you've got three of your pit beads let's lay them out so that you can see on your thread and then what you want to do is take one of your ends so let's take this one and go back through all three beads again. OK, so let's try that with this tiger tail. So holding it in your hand, take your end and go back through all three of your beads again. So that's one. And I'll take my hands out the way and show you in a moment. That's two. And then one more, three. And before I pull it together, I'll show you what it looks like, which we wouldn't have been able to see with the monofilament because it's invisible. That's the point of it. OK, so what you've got are your three pit beads. And you've gone through twice into a circle. And then you just need to pull this tight on either side like so. Now you'll find that your pit beads want to sit out like a little kind of butterfly shape, but you need them to sit down. So you need to pull these strands until your beads sort of sit in a little cone shape. And then all you have to do is tie a double knot. So one, just a shoelace knot. And make sure that your beads are sitting together in this sort of little cone shape and two tighten a double knot so there you go and then you take your ends I'm not sure if it will do it with the tiger tail but it does it very easily with the monofilament and pop it back through the bead next to it so that's one tail through there and then let's take the other tail through here there we go. So it's quite easy with tiger tail as well. Not tiger tail, beading thread. And then you just need to trim those off with the scissors. Um, I didn't find that my Elizabeth, Lynn, I didn't find that my uh, monofilament knots came apart at all. I just did um, 
three knots instead of two the instructions say do two i did three um, and i actually did it for all of these and i haven't put any glue or anything on and it, they've stayed together beautifully i think with monofilament i tend to find it's easier than elastic because it's not stretchy and it's not thick um, if you're worried pop a little bit of glue on onto those knots and because when you've finished doing your components you just put them aside until you've done 24 so you could do your one of your components pop a little bit of glue on the knot put it aside carry on put it aside and have a little um production line going like that so that would be my advice if you have trouble trouble with your knots coming apart but as i say with the monofilament that i used i didn't i just knotted three times instead of two and it seemed fine i didn't have a problem hope that helps okay so you want to make 24 of these and that is per the instructions now if you want it to be a little bit longer or a little bit shorter then you can probably take away or add one or two of, of these that's up to you so when you've finished you will have 24 of these little components now i'm not going to make um 24 and make you watch me do you're welcome 24 components so i've just done a couple we'll do a mini bracelet okay and then once you've done your 24 components you can put your monofilament aside and we're going to move to our tiger tail um beading wire and this is also on the website if you need some of that and it's relatively inexpensive tiger tail and it's this, if you're not sure what I mean, it's the beading wire that has the strands in and this is a gold, sort of a gold one to go with the gold. Um, what if the beads are smaller, how many then? Susan, do you mean um, the, these, these pip beads? I think you'd need to use pip beads rather than smaller beads. If you tried smaller beads, I think you'd have to just do a trial and error and just, you'll see when I start growing it that you could measure it round your wrist then and then you'd know how many to pop on. Okay, so once you've done your 24 of your components, you pop those aside and your instructions say to cut 50 centimetres of your tiger tail. So this is the main wire that we're going to string everything onto oh smaller pit beads um if you had the smaller pit beads obviously i haven't done it with the smaller pit beads but i would say that you'd you'd need a few more so as you grow your let me undo this one as you grow your bracelet bearing in mind that we are going to put a bit of an extender chain on there you could um, just keep sort of measuring as you go along take into consideration the width of your clasp and your end bead and then sort of add on accordingly so i would probably add on a few more and again it depends on your wrist size so i can't give you an exact uh, exact number but these are the large pit beads so if you do have the small ones you'll probably have to do a couple more components Okay, so you've got your 24 components or however many you need and you've got your 50 centimetres of tiger tail. Okay, so now we're going to need some crimp beads. You're welcome. You're going to need some crimp beads and you're going to need start to use your 8O seeds. So I'm just going to get a couple of those out. Your 11O seed beads. Get some of those out. And then some 15 O seed beads. Now the 15 O C beads actually act as the little loop that connects your bracelet. So I'll show you that on the finished bracelet. So if you can see, I've connected my chain with the 15 O seed beads. If you don't have 15 O's and you're not wanting to get any, you could do that with 11 O's. You could modify that and do some 11 O's instead. Um, obviously, it would just be a little bit bigger, but the 15 O's work beautifully. Oh, you're welcome. OK, so what we need to do now is take our tiger tail and what we're going to bob on is a crimp tube or a crimp bead whatever you're going to use an 80 seed bead which is the larger seed bead another crimp bead and an 80 i'm just looking at the instructions here because i've only made it once okay so this is what i have on my thread i'm then going to add my bead cap so just let me grab that here and you want to go it describes it in the instructions 
as the dimpled part of the bead cap and what it means is this larger opening you want to go up through the larger the larger opening here instead of um, downwards like that if you're with me okay but you, you get all of this um, you get all of this information actually on your instructions so you bob these on and then you're going to bob your bead cap on and then you're going to bob on your 50 nose seed beads and you need eight of these and they do fit on your tiger tail perfectly so one two three four five six seven and eight and I'll show you what I have on my thread without knocking it off this time okay so we've got our eight fifty nose we've got our lovely uh, aren't these gorgeous antique bead caps and then we've got our eight o's and our crimp beads and these are actually going to sit inside the bead cap so you won't see those at all okay so then we're going to take our tail and we want to go back down through our bead cap okay so that what we're doing is we're making a nice little loop here with our size 15 so we'll be able to add our jump ring onto that and then we want to take our wire here let's let me grab my crimp bead down back through as many of these beads as we can so we're going to go back through our ato our crimp bead our ato and our last crimp bead, just as you would when you usually crimp something. So I'll show you that, I'll get my fingers out of the way. Okay, so both of my strands are now, hi Donna, through everything. And then what we want to do is push this snugly down right inside, and I'll try and show you, inside our bead cap. And we're going to get our pliers, get hold of the very first of our crimp beads, and I'm just going to push it down as far as I can before I crimp it, squish it into place, okay? And then I'm going to take my second crimp bead, push it down and squash it into place. So now I am totally secure there. I've got my little anchor point here for my jump ring to go on later. And all of these beads here are crimped into place. So now it's just very, very repetitive. What we're going to do, now you can choose to trim off your excess tail whenever you want to, if it gets in your way, or you can take it down some more beads. I'm going to just get it off so that you can see what I'm doing. So what we're going to do now is use all of these little components that we made with our monofilament. So you want to put on your component pointy end first. So we're going to pop on our pointy end just through the middle of that component there and it will sit really nicely there at the end of our bead cap. And then between each of our components we're going to pop on an 11-0 and an 8-0 seed bead. So I'm going to pop on an 11-0, an 8-0 and my next component through the pointy end okay so again and then from here on it's just very repetitive 24 times and you'll see that they'll all start to fit inside each other so we'll do that again we're adding on an 11-0 we're adding on our 8 so we're not seeing these they're just inside our little components making this lovely little scales bracelet sit together and then we go our next component that we've made earlier tiger tail goes down the middle and that sits all together now don't worry if it's sitting all apart now it will all push down together later when we finish so i'm just going to pop on a few more in this fashion and then i'll show you how to finish it off so what you do is 24 of these according to your instructions will make a bracelet like this Okay, and they all just sort of sit inside each other and you don't see any of the seed beads. You just see these lovely scales. Now there is a free downloadable pattern if you've just joined us available on the website which will show you text and photographs as well. Okay, so we're going to pop on our 
It says 10 in the instructions, which you could use, but I'm using 11 O's and our 8 O. And then we're going to put on our little component from the pointy end, drop it down. And I've got three more to do just so that we can make a mini one. So 11 O. And our 8 O. And then our component pointy end down. <laughs> they're leaves I think you'll be fine with leaves I think the principle is fine as long as they sit all together in this little sort of I like to use it call it like a little bud isn't it a little flower as long as they sit like that I can't see a problem in substituting the beads I really can't I think you'll be fine have a go I think it will be fun so let's do another couple 11 o, 8 o, pointy end so it's really quite relaxing this bit you don't really have to think about it too much drop it down and the last one i just made we'll do the 11 o the 8 o and then pointy end now when you come to the end the very last one instead of putting on an 11 o and an 8 o you're just going to pop on your 11 o and we're going to do something a little bit different so i'm going to pop on my 11 o now we're not going to finish it the way we started because when we started we started with the pointy end so the bead cap sits really nicely if you popped your bead cap on now without anything else you would have this sort of large gap and this petal tends to wiggle about and it doesn't sit properly so i'm show you how we're going to rectify this so you've put on your 11 and we're going to add on some slightly different combination of beads here so let me have a look at my pattern we're going to add on two of our crimp tubes one and or beads whoops come here so we've got two of our crimp tubes we've added 11 o two of our crimp tubes and in the instructions it says to add a 12 millimeter fire polish bead but we've got some lovely 12 millimeter pearls here so if you wanted those they are in the bundle on the website or if you've got another 12 millimeter bead at home, you only need one for the project, you can certainly use that. I think it would probably work with a 10 millimeter as well, but I've not tried that. And you're going to pop on this bead. And what this bead does, it sits inside so that when you push it together, it kind of pushes everything together and keeps this end open so that we can add our clasp. And if I show you on the finish bracelet, can you see what I mean? Whereas if you just had seed beads in there, it would collapse on one end. Okay, so we've added our 12 millimeter pearl. Then we need to add on three eight O's, and this is all in the instructions. Three eight O beads. Our cap, which we go through the wide end again. And then once again, we add on our eight 15 O's, which are going to work as our loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is what I have. Drop it down. And then you want to take, once again, your thread back through your bead cap. Now I'm going to open it out so that you can see what I'm doing because it's a bit fiddly. Where have my crimp beads gone? They're down there, right? So I'm going to take my beading thread, I'll try and take it out wide so you can see, through my bead cap, okay, and that will make my little loop on the end of my 15 O's. And then I'm going to go through my three eight O's. through my pearl so through my eight toes there through my pearl or whatever bead 12 millimeter bead you've used okay so i've gone through everything that i've strung on i'm then going to go through my crimp beads and if i can i'm going to go through my 11 o See if I can get it through. I can't remember if I did last time. If not, it doesn't matter. 
so you need to decide how sort of far you can go I can't get it through there so that'll be enough and then what you do is you move everything down right down into your little component and you would crimp it as you usually would so you need to give it all a pull if you have problems then just pull out your end push everything down obviously take some time to do this give it a pull and then you need to once again take your pliers and you're going to need to sort of go looking inside here and you'll see hiding in there let's see if I can show you your little crimp beads and you just need to squish those into place so I squish those into place and then of course you cut any excess tail of your tiger tail and that's your bracelet so obviously you've done a baby bracelet <laughs> so it would be this long if you'd done your 24 components and then all that's left to do is add the clasp of your choice onto your two ends so what I did here was I added a jump ring with a lobster clasp onto our seed bead loop there on one side and then on the other side to be a bit more decorative I added a little extender chain using my jump rings and then added a pip bead on the end now on the instructions it says to add the pip bead to a jump ring and if you've got thin enough jump rings you can do that but these were a bit thick so I just added these on with some wire or you could use you know um uh, eye pin or a head pin that would be fine so I'm just going to show you how to make this little extender chain it's really easy it's just with your jump rings so let me grab a couple of of jump rings here and it's just a two on two to make a little chain so if you take two jump rings and they're just going to sit together so I'm going to open another jump ring here And just pop, make sure that your jump rings are closed properly. And I'm just going to pop two jump rings onto my single jump ring and close it there. And then I'm going to take another jump ring. So I'm basically connecting two jump rings to two jump rings. You always want to open your jump ring like a door. So find your single jump ring. Who wants to stick to my pliers? <laughs> Come here, little jump ring. There we go. And you're just going to add the two jump rings onto that. Now, I didn't do a two on two jump ring weave. What I did was just a single jump ring. Let me see if I can see so you can see that clearly. A single jump ring, then two, then a single one, then two. In the instructions it does two, two, two and two. That's completely up to you, you know, how you want to do that. So as I say, this isn't my pattern, it's the Preciosa pattern, but you can do that. And then on the end I just added a pit bead just for a little bit of interest. And if your jump ring will fit through that, you can just add it with a jump ring or you can add it with a loop with your eye pin or a bit of wire. And then onto the other side, I've just added a jump ring and my lobster clasp in the same way. So it is, it is a neater, it's a really nice sort of chunky, chunky bracelet. And if I put it across my wrist, you'll be able to see sort of what it looks like and it's really lovely and tactile it really moves beautifully and it's very comfortable so you've got these little seed beads sitting inside there but you can't see them they're just making sure everybody sits really beautifully together and then you've got this one pearl or whatever bead you want to use in the end making sure everything stays open and I think that adds a really nice feature there especially with this this blue colorway Lynn says, I think that baby bracelet would make great earrings if you left the seed bead cap off. I agree. Wouldn't they be lovely? Because I think when you've made these components, which are the components that we started with, you can do lots of things with those, can't you? Now, this one's not sitting properly because I did it with the wildfire just to show you. Um, but you could do sort of maybe three of those and you could maybe have some little stamen coming out with your wire maybe put some seed beads so with the same kit you could do this and then maybe a bead at the top that would be ever so pretty for earrings a bit like um a fuchsia a fuchsia flower um so there's lots of different ways that you can use this design um a pendant drop that's a great idea christine um earrings 
you could get, um, say, three pieces of wire, add some little seed beads that we have in the kit, a little round bead at the top or size eights and just your earring wire that would be ever so pretty now after i made the bracelet i had one two three four five six seven beads left so that would definitely be enough to make earrings with the kit you because you'd have two you can make two of these um earrings to sort of match the chunky bracelet i think that would be really pretty you know obviously we've got our baby <laughs> we've got our baby bracelet there but you get the idea and then we've got our full size bracelet so both of those colorways if you've just joined us are available on the spot rotten beads website if you go onto the first page and then you go into just arrive scroll across you'll see the two colorways now you don't have to buy everything you can sort of if you need the bead caps you can buy those if you need the crimps you can buy those so you can pick and choose what you want to get but everything that i've used is on there so just to recap if you've just joined us for the little components i used the monofilament thread so obviously it's invisible and you can't see it in the demonstration I used black thread just so you could see what I was doing but the whole thing is actually strung onto your tiger tail wire okay so that's monofilament and tiger tail wire any questions before um, I go just let me read in the chat make sure I haven't missed anything it's a lovely looking bracelet isn't it Charlotte quite unusual when I saw it I thought how lovely it would it would be as sort of a choker as well you know just just the beads i think it would be ever so pretty um <laughs> i think it's nice to try this with different beads though angeline i think um you'll probably get some quite interesting shapes and interesting designs you can have a play with it so if you are wanting the free downloadable pattern that is available and obviously you can then you know modify it and do and do something you're the jewelry makers um i found this very relaxing to do because it was very quick and easy it was very repetitive um and just quite mindful really i could i could sit and have a play and kind of watch my favorite thing on tv or chat to my daughter and and i wasn't having to concentrate too much so i really enjoyed that i also really enjoy uh jewelry that moves you know jewelry that's quite tactile because it is called sort of the um scales bracelet so it is like sort of like scales it's incredibly pretty okay you're very, very welcome. Thanks so much for joining me. And just to um, remind you that everything that I've used today is on the www.spotrottenbeads.co.uk website. And there's so many tutorials on there, inspiration, beautiful bits and bobs. So do go and have a look if you want to. And um, also you'll see all of the tutorials that we've done on a workshop. Thank you so much for joining me live today. It's been absolutely lovely to see you. And thank you for joining me as well if you're watching on the replay and if you do have a go at this please do pop your mates into the spoilt rotten beaders group because we love to see what you make in it it's just really really lovely because you're such a talented lot oh you're so welcome it's so lovely to have you and you're very welcome from the tutorial i'll be back with you really soon and i hope you all stay well and happy until i see you again uh, take care okay bye <laughs>